Today we're looking at issue 1, Pastors with the Bible, how to get a good grip on the Bible we're getting from our Lord. Now some background on the religion of Christianity is that the, they believe that the divine Godhead consists of three parts. The Father, God himself, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The essence of Christianity revolves around the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, and the beliefs that follow. Christians believe that God sent his son, Jesus, to save the world and die on the cross for Christian sins. Now, this book goes over the relationship between Dr. Gregory Boyd and his skeptical father, Edward Boyd. Over the course of a couple years, Greg Boyd corresponded with and witnessed to his father. This book is a glimpse into their private letters back and forth. Like many skeptics, Edward Boyd has a negative impression of Christianity from the experiences that he's had and the actions he's witnessed that have been done in the name of Christianity. As such, he lends a voice to many of the common objections to the Christian faith. Some questions such as, why would a good God permit suffering? How do I know the Bible is true? How can Jesus' death atone for anyone's sins? And his son, Gregory Boyd skillfully and lovingly responds to each and every objection with a heart focused on leading his father to Christ. At the end of the process, his father does become a Christian, but whether or not you believe Christianity, this book is a beautiful way of showing how many of the conversations that go on between Christians and non-Christians in our world today while struggling to figure out their faith and understand one of the major religions in our world today. He touches on the subject. He touches on many subjects, but I'm going to go over just a couple that I found particularly interesting. He talks about how each sector of sector of Christianity interprets the Bible. Now, these are just ways that he believes, but I thought it was an interesting perspective. He says that liberal churches don't necessarily regard the Bible as God's word and that sometimes they feel free to reject aspects that they don't agree with. He says that the fundamentalists are so afraid of anything liberal and modern that they tend to read the Bible ahistorically and make it kind of into a 20th century legal document. He says that the Catholics um, see the Bible as one of several sources of authority, the Pope and the church tradition being the other two. And the Orthodox has the same perspective, but it doesn't really accept the Pope. And then there's the evan and Evangelicals, who, like the Fundamentalists, view the Bible as God's word, but they also think that it should be read as historical context, but not necessarily a legal document. He also, when his father asks, how could a loving God allow such horrible suffering to happen? His son responds with the idea that if God is going to give free will to all of his creatures, he has to allow for the possibility of potentially misusing that freedom, even if it means hurting to others. To be free is to be morally responsible, but what is freedom to love or not to love unless freedom to enrich or harm one another? God structured us this way. Christians believe God structured us this way because... Um, and the alternative would be a race of robots who can't genuinely love, as Boyd says. So why doesn't God intervene every time someone is going to misuse his freedom and hurt another person? And Greg says that this is the nature of freedom himself, and a freedom that is prevented from being exercised whenever it is going to be misused wouldn't be freedom. His dad also questions about why the, judgmentalist, the judgmentalness exhibited by some institutions and the horrible things done in the name of Christianity, how, how does that play into this? And his son responds that the Christian church who does the evils that you write about in the name of God doesn't necessarily mean that they're Christian. Christianity isn't a religion or an institution of any sort. It's a relationship between God and the individual. And, um... There have always been genuine and non-genuine Christians, according to Greg Boyd, and that this is, this is a result of the bad things done in Christianity's name, but also the amazing things, and that the religion of Christianity and the institution of the church 
is not itself Christian. Only people can be Christian, as Greg says. Now, these are just a couple things of how Greg interpreted Christianity and how he chooses to tell his father about it. And this book touches on many questions that I've heard people talk about on a daily basis on a daily basis, and I thought it was interesting to hear a Christian's perspective on how to answer them. And some of these, of course, is not how all Christians believe, but this book was a great way to see how just one member of society chooses to explain the Christian belief. I personally learned a lot about Christianity from this book just by one non-Christian asking questions and another answering them. I think that this book is also a great way to learn about the Christian faith in a very unique way.